In this video, we'll place our focus on tilting pad journal bearings, a specific type of fluid film bearings known for its inherent stability. This stability factor has made it a favored choice for commercial turbo machines. The key to the stability of tilting pad journal bearings lies in their design, featuring multiple pads or shoes that have the freedom to tilt. This unique design ensures that at equilibrium, there's no net moment acting on each pad, effectively minimizing or eliminating the generation of destabilizing forces, such as destabilizing cross-couple stiffness. There are so many types of pivots as shown in this slide. Tilting pad journal bearing and the lubricant thermal mixing occurs between the pads. Hot oil from the upstream pad combines with the cooler oil from the bearing inlet forming a mixed oil stream that enters the leading edge of the downstream pad. This phenomenon commonly referred as hot oil carryover. The amount of hot oil carryover is quantified by the thermal mixing coefficient, typically value of 0.8. As oil moves from the leading edge to the trailing edge of the pad, the temperature of the lubricant will increase. The pad loaded with the shaft typically have higher temperature than others. In 1994, John Nicholas outlined various design limits for bearings, including maximum Babbitt temperatures. He noted that a Babbitt would melt at approximately 235 degrees Celsius and become soft, leading to whipping or smearing around 121 degrees Celsius. A high temperature bearing failure will usually cause the oil to break down and leave the dark coating on the bearing surface. Here is a good example. High temperature operation can induce varnish deposition within the bearing and the hydraulic control systems. To prevent these issues, it is advisable to maintain the maximum Babbitt temperature below 115 degrees Celsius. Operating bearings at excessive high temperatures without proper oil filtration can result in thermal stress on the oil leading to varnish formation. Let's talk about the method of lubrication which affects the bearing temperature. This plot shows the maximum temperature rise with the running speed. As you could see from this figure, different lubricant feed method affects the bearing temperature increase. The single orifice feed typically used in pressurized housing with the end seals is a conventional method for lubricating fluid film bearings. Avoiding this method without end seals is advised to prevent bearing starvation due to insufficient oil. The spray bar blocker feeds cool inlet oil closer to the pad surface, which aims to decrease the hot oil carryover. The spray bar introduces cool inlet oil closer to the pad surface, similar to the SBB. The leading edge groove is comprised of a groove that runs actually along the leading edge of the pad with the cool inlet oil directly supplied to the groove. Waukesha bearing has similar spray bar feed type lubrication method as shown here. Let's examine the load comparison between load between pad and load on pad. Typically, load between pad demonstrates high load capacity and improved damping characteristics. However, it's essential to note that this is a simplified overview of the load performance comparison. The impact of load direction on direct stiffness related to the number of pads is shown here. In case of load between pads, an increasing in number of pads results in decrease in bearing stiffness. While for load on pad, an increasing in number of pads leads to an increasing in bearing stiffness. The figure on the right displays the fluid film pressure profile, which generates both bearing stiffness and damping. The KCM model is well suited for tilting pad journal bearing with rigid pivots. However, its accuracy diminishes as pivot flexibility increases. In case of bearing pads featuring flexible pivots, a frequency-dependent force coefficient model is more appropriate. 
Here is an example of frequency dependent force coefficient. X axis is the excitation frequency and Y axis is the real part of impedances. In this plot, the data shows scattered at high excitation frequency, which can be due to a hardening effect indicating increasing in stiffness. Here is the frequency dependent force coefficient for imaginary part. These values can be applied in rotor dynamic analysis to accurately predict the rotor responses. Alright, this is all I have for you today. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.